things they're accusing me of. I don't even know who the person is. Look at that girl. She has no idea what's ahead of her. I wish I could warn her. I'm gonna see the real you today and this whole thing will be over. And if they don't? I can't think like that. If they don't, I could go away for 10 years, Scott. I wouldn't be there for Miles or for you. I don't know how I'm supposed to handle this. <laughs> I'm ready. Hey, that's great. Miles, uh, hey, I'm gonna take you to school today, okay? I want Mommy to take me. Oh, Lou, I wish I could. But I have a very important appointment today. I want you to go have fun with your friends, okay? Slow down, buddy. We don't know if this is our house yet. <laughs> I wish I had that much energy. Yeah, he's turning house hunting into a competitive sport. Oh, I like the cul-de-sac on this one. Seems safe for playing outside. Yeah, you're right. It's a great family neighborhood. It's lots of kids. And there's a great elementary school just two miles away. It's one of the top rated in Seattle. All right, shall we? Yeah. Okay. Watch your step there. Oh, come on can, in. Can I explore upstairs? <laughs> Go ahead, Lou. Just don't make a mess. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Looks like we're the first ones in. Yeah. They, they haven't staged the house yet, but um, I promise I'll make it a blank slate before you move it, if you're interested. It's okay. I think we're capable of using a little imagination. Yeah, this one's a master decorator. She's probably already picking out oh. new curtains. The good news is the owners are very motivated to sign. Mm. And you wanted to move in before the school year, right? Uh, yeah, well, I'm already working in town, so the sooner we can get Karen and Miles settled down, the better for everyone. Ah, uh, okay. I am... I'm so sorry about <laughs> this. Um, okay. As you can see... This is a real chef perfect for big family meals. Is there a chef in the family? Oh, yeah, well, Karen's never met a souffle or a roast of whatever that she didn't have to make on her own. <laughs> uh, I do like the stovetop, but these windows. Oh, wow. These windows are stunning. Why would anyone block out all this lovely light? Uh, migraines, I think some people are photosensitive. Huh, not me. Oh, Scott. Miles could play outside while I'm making dinner at the same time. <laughs> I love the sound of that. You know, a couch could go right here. A little play area for Miles over there. Maybe a cozy reading chair over here. Your flat screen right there. A little love, a little work. You want to do this? I don't know why anyone would leave such a perfect house behind, but they went out. You went in. Maybe it was meant to be. Maybe. <laughs> oh, so many pillows. Which one's your favorite? Hi. Oh. I'm Susie, your neighbor across the street. I just saw you drive in and wanted to come say hi and make sure to give you these. Oh. They're my special carrot and apple muffins, vegan in case you were. Well, we're omnivores around here, but thank you. I'm sure they're delicious. It's nice to meet you. I'm Karen. This is Miles. Hi, Miles. And this is... This is Finn. He's six. Do you want to play in... Come on in. <laughs> oh, wow, that's so great. Finn is usually much more tentative around new friends. Oh, well, Miles has been starving for someone his own age to play with since the move. It's so nice you guys live so close. Oh, wow. You've been busy. Everything <laughs> looks so fresh and new. Thank you. Scott and I are determined to make this our dream home. Hey, 
How's it going? Did you go down all right? I missed you at bedtime. Yeah. Uh, with these new work hours, bedtime's gonna be a little tough. Well, we knew that would be the case. Lucky for you, you have such an amazing wife at home. That's for sure. Lisa Beasley, I live on the other side of the street, and we share a backyard. Oh, of course. I'm so glad you came by. I'm Karen Morgan. This is Miles. Hi, hello. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a little welcome to the neighborhood. Can we go inside? Of course. Would you like to come in? Oh, sure. Please, okay. yes. Go ahead, Miles. You want to lead the way? So he's about six, Dorothy Peacock. That's right. Do you have kids? Yeah, my son, Elliot, I think he'll probably be in the same class. Oh, was he home? He should come over. It's practically his backyard, too. Okay. I'll just text my daughter, Allie. She's at home with him right now. Okay. Okay. Wow. Oh, my gosh. you got to give me your decorator's number. This is gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, I don't have a decorator. It's all me. It's kind of a hobby. Wow. Oh, that's Allie. He's coming over. Oh, good. He'll be so happy. <laughs> Oh, we're getting along. Yeah. <laughs> I swear, you give a boy a ball, and he's occupied for hours. <laughs> Allie, who's 12 going on 40, has always had a taste for the finer things. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, that is a stunning necklace. Oh, thank you. My husband, Scott, got it for me. Oh, anniversary? Dan, that's my husband. Always goes overboard for her anniversary. Oh, no, it wasn't a wedding anniversary. More like a keepsake. Before Miles, we had another baby, uh, a little girl who died. Oh, I'm so sorry. Do you want to talk about it? Since our little girl, Rose, was eight weeks old when she died. I got four. I know I didn't cause it, but I can't help thinking that if I just did one thing differently, it would have made a difference. I'm sorry. No. I didn't mean to dump this on you. Oh, it's been seven years. You wouldn't think I would be so. This. Oh, but Scott got me this because uh, I feel like she's always with us. You just don't know how much that means to me. Um, we also had a daughter, Annabelle, five weeks since. Oh, my God. Lisa, I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's like you said, you're fine. But you still really wonder about, like, what could have been. Yeah. I can't believe we both went through this. I've always felt so alone, but here you are. <laughs> right in your backyard. Literally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I can't believe school starts on Monday. I don't know if I'm ready for Miles to be gone all day. Mom, I'm going. Uh, please come over and say hi. Karen, thank you so much for hosting. Of course. And Lisa, I can't believe you've been one street over the whole time we've lived here. Hello. Allie. This is Allie. Please. Laura's mom is taking her back to school shopping and they invited me. Can I have some money? Oh, is your room clean? Yes. And you took out the trash? I will when I get back. Okay. But that trash better go out tonight. 
You know, if you want to earn some money after school, Allie, and if it's okay with your mom, I could use someone to keep an eye on Miles just a few extra hours a week, but could keep some cash in your pocket. Okay. Thanks, Mrs. Morgan. Of course. Bye, honey. I'm sorry. I hope I wasn't interfering there. Oh, not at all. It'll be so good for her. But it does give me an idea. Um, what do you say to a little back-to-school shopping for moms? You think Allie's around to babysit this weekend? Yeah. Cheers to that. <laughs> Susie, hmm. they kill you to show a little skin. <laughs> that blouse is something, Lisa. Your husband better be right? careful. <gasps> oh, wow. That dress is made for you. <sighs> it's a little more bold than I usually go. Uh, it is absolutely your color, and you must get it. It's got your name on it. Right? Uh, okay. Okay, okay. I'm excited. Thank you. I'm Karen Morgan, and this is my son, Miles. Hi, Miles. Welcome to room A. Hi. <laughs> Welcome, Mom. Here are a few things you'll need to know for the year ahead. Thank you. Great dress, by the way. Thank you so much. We just moved to town, and I want to do anything to volunteer. In fact, we could use someone right now to reach at the class one day a week. Done. Just tell me when. <laughs> well, I look forward to it then. My information's in the folder. Okay, thank you. Hi, right, Miles. Pick you up this afternoon, okay? I'll Big hug. <laughs> <laughs> Can I go play now? Of course. Oh, Lisa. Karen, oh my God. I'm so embarrassed. That dress looks so good on you. So I went back the next day and got it, and I never dreamed we would wear them on the exact same day. <laughs> Great minds must think alike. You look um, beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Hi, you was Hi. Miss Carmen? Yes, I am. Hi, that's Elliot. He's my um, monster, my very special monster. <laughs> I'm glad I caught you. I just wanted to say sorry for the whole dress mix-up again. You really did wear it better. <laughs> it happened. Dan and I were thinking about having some people over to celebrate the first week of school. Would you be interested? We'd love to come. Just let me know what I can bring. Okay, great. Thank God the kids are back in school, huh? <laughs> okay, enjoy your freedom, Mom. Bye. Morgan. No, everything's great here. You actually... Yes, I would love to come in. Next week is great. Okay. I'll see you then. Thanks. Pepper bites? Anywhere? Oh, oh, Karen, these are the sweetest. Where do you even find these little flags? Oh, uh, Karen really could find a needle in a haystack, especially if there's something cute to make with that needle. <laughs> I am so excited for you guys to try Dan's ribs. They are a family recipe. Ah, secret recipe? Secret mm -hmm. recipe. Well, here's to surviving the first week of school. Uh, and to the Morgans, welcome to the neighborhood. Thanks. Oh, and Karen has some exciting news to share as well. Go ahead, honey. Well, since Miles has adjusted so nicely to kindergarten, I've decided to go back to work. I'm going to get my real estate license in Washington. Congratulations. 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 Hey, cheers. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. All right, who's up for some ribs? Me. <laughs> Anyone else need a new drink? Oh, yeah, I'll give you a hand. Karen, that is so great. You know, I was just talking to Dan about maybe I'll go back to work now that Elliot's older, and, and he suggested real estate. That's great. <laughs> maybe you guys can work together. Yeah, love it great. <laughs> and Karen, with your eye for staging, you are going to be selling houses left, right, no. and center. I think I like that part just as much as selling. Well, thanks to you, I can attest to the power of the right throw pillow. You know, Karen, you really do have to come over and help me decorate. Or maybe you'll be too busy now. Let's schedule it for next week, then. Um, you know, before it gets too busy. And, and then, um, speaking of which... Anniversary. Anniversary. Dan, 
it wasn't a wedding anniversary, more like a keepsake. I definitely started the living room first. Karen? Yes, um, uh, I'm just gonna go get the potato salad. Excuse me. So back to work, that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> This look amazing. Oh, thanks. You know your ribs? Oh, my mom used to have a recipe, but I haven't made it in years. Oh, next time we should have a rib off. Yeah. You bring your recipe and I'll do mine. Yeah. You know, I have to say, uh, I'm really happy that you and Lisa have struck up such a friendship. It's hard on Lisa sometimes connecting with other moms. You mean after Annabelle? A Annabelle? Your baby. Like Scott and I, angel wing necklace. Oh, um, I'm sorry, you must have misunderstood. My brother and his wife lost a baby Annabelle to SIDS, not me and Lisa. We've only ever had Allie and Elliot. We must have got the wires crossed somewhere there. Hey, how's your head feeling now? My room stopped spinning, so that's good. I still can't figure out where I got it wrong. I know what she told me, Scott. Hey, yeah. And I believe you. It's her that I'm not sure about. I mean, she got the same necklace as me, without even telling me. I mean, how did it not even occur to her that that would hurt me? <sighs> I have to believe that Lisa has her own reasons for doing what she did. The only thing I can do is find grace for her. You're a better person than me. And that's why I love you. The lion roared his biggest roar. Can you guys show me your biggest roar? <laughs> Those are great roars. And the zookeeper was very afraid. Can you show me your afraid faces? Very good. Let's find out what happened to the lion and the zookeeper. Oh, it's the alligator twins. And they made the elephant very nervous. Can you do a nervous face? Good job. Thank you so much. The kids clearly loved having you. Thank you, it made my day. Can we all say thank you to Miles' mom, Mrs. Morgan? Thank you, Mrs. Morgan. Thank you, class. I'll see you next Thursday. See you Bye. on Thursday. Oh, it looks like somebody did some retail therapy. I actually needed some new work clothes. Oh, cool. Mommy, can I go out on my scooter? Well, we're going to be out here for, what, another 20 minutes? He's welcome to join us. Okay, Moo, just till dinner time, all right? Yeah, get your stuff. Hey, is Allie okay watching Miles after school tomorrow? I have a work commitment. Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. And if anything, I'm home, so we'll watch him together. Thank you. Team Mom, we gotta stick together, eh? <laughs> have fun, buddy. All right, kids. Thanks again. No problem. Guys, you're gonna be late. Don't you worry about us, Miss Washington real estate agent. Just trying to dress the part. Mm -hmm. Thank you for taking him. Of course. Miles, wish Mom good luck at work. Good luck, Mommy. Oh, thank you. Mwah. It might rain today, so take this. And don't forget that Allie's going to bring you home after school, OK? Mwah. Have a good day. Let's go, Moo. Race you to the car. This isn't the most private space. Oh, it's great. So when are you writing the exam? Six weeks. That's perfect. We'll get you out in the field shadowing me. You can do your coursework here. Whitney, thank you. Oh, like me. Just sell houses for me. On it. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> studied and feel that a few incoming calls. I'm really happy that you're making this happen. Jeez, this rain is really coming down. Oh, no. 
got. Oh, shoot. I can't remember if we brought Miles' brain jacket in from the car to the school this morning. Sorry about that. I hope he made it all home okay with Allie. Yeah. They got soaked, and so I wanted to get him here and get some dry clothes, get him some hot chocolate so he didn't get a cold. Right, babe? Yeah, he's fine. I mean, Hi, he was about his raincoat. Got school, babe. This is Seattle. <sighs> hey, Lou, I was worried. How'd you get so wet? Ellie and I ran home after the bus, but I guess the rain got us. Mm. I'm sorry I wasn't there, but... That's okay. It was kind of fun. I mean, you borrowed some of Elliot's clothes, but it totally doesn't matter. Get him back whenever. Do you want a hot chocolate tip? I can't believe you're really going through with the whole real estate thing. That is so great. I'm just proud of you. <laughs> it's a little busy, but it's good to do something outside of the house that doesn't revolve around miles. Oh, yeah. Actually, maybe you could clear something up for me in the spirit of Team Mom. Do you remember when I told you about my daughter, Rose? Dan told me you guys spoke, and um, I have a confession to make. It's been really hard to keep this a secret, especially from you. Um, I have Parkinson's. Parkinson's? Yeah, maybe. Caught it early. I was at the hospital today for more blood work, and this is all my upcoming appointments and I just made a little book of them and so I can know where they all are and then and I won't forget any of them and and um, it'll be fine. <laughs> so your baby Annabelle? Not being able to keep your facts straight is one of the symptoms. Which is really embarrassing. And I am so sorry. If I upset you, I never meant to do this. I'm so sorry. Please. Please let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. Oh, my gosh. Parkinson's. Wow. I know, right? That's horrible. Poor family. <laughs> what? Well, don't get mad at me for saying this, but, you know, isn't it a little convenient? Why would she lie about that? Well, she did. But she had a bandage on her arm, and she seemed so busy with all these treatments coming up. Well, if it is Parkinson's, then I, I feel terrible for the whole family. It does make me feel better about the whole baby mix-up thing. Poor thing, she must be so confused all the time. It makes me appreciate how lucky we are. Police think it could have been teenagers having fun. They said crimes like this in suburbs are usually random. Gosh, I hope they find who did it. <sighs> Me too. The whole thing makes my stomach turn. Speaking of, did you hear about Lisa's illness? Oh, Parkinson's. I was so shocked. Maybe we should start a meal train? Wait, Parkinson's? Lisa told me that it was lupus. Okay, now I'm confused. Oh, 
I thought we could use the living room more. What? She told Susie she has lupus. I thought you said she had Parkinson's. Because that's what she told me. I don't know what to believe anymore. I thought it sounded suspect. I was willing to give her the benefit of the doubt, but I don't even want to be in our kitchen anymore. I feel like she watches us through those windows. Yeah. Did I ever tell you about Seth Spellman? He was my roommate freshman year of college. He was a nice guy. We got along. He was funny, charismatic. Had a story for everything. It took me a while, but eventually I realized he was a compulsive liar. He couldn't help it. I would say one thing, he would have to top it every time. What did you do? Well, I tried confronting him about it once, but he just blew up at me, and then the lying didn't stop. So I realized he wasn't going to change. Just gave him a lot of space and didn't take anything he said as truth. But it's more than that with Lisa. There's something I'm not getting. Hey, I'm going to go watch TV in our family room because one neighbor is not going to ruin our night. Join me. You're right. I'm going to give her space. This is your lunch from yesterday. Why didn't you eat it? I don't know. Well, weren't you hungry? All right, well, today I'm giving you turkey and avocado pinwheels and carrots and dip. I want you to eat it so you don't feel hungry later, all right? Okay, Mommy. Okay. Buddy, have a good day. Bye, Mommy. Okay, I hope you're ready to get busy. Here's a few inquiries you can follow up on. I'm excited to dive in. After lunch. I'm starving, and I cannot have another sad desk salad. <laughs> Grab your coat. Up for you. All right. Wait, the same dress? Who does that? I know, <laughs> and I thought it was just a coincidence. Oh, no, no, that's not a coincidence. This one is a verified piece <laughs> of work. Do the people selling the house ever mention anything? The Rafferty's? I wish I could say they'd given us warning, but they did everything through a broker. Date night spots in Seattle. Scott, we've hardly seen the city together. Well, that depends what you consider a date night. I mean, I would say sushi on the waterfront. Miles, come on. We gotta put on your jacket. It covers my costume. I know, but I don't want you getting sick. Come on. Thank you. Hey. Hi. Is Lisa not coming? Oh, she asked me to watch Elliot. I think Ellie needed help getting ready for a party or something. Well, Scott's in his happy place handing out candy, so should we hit up the first house, boys? Let's go. Let's do it. This way. Across the street. Go, 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 go. Happy Halloween. Uh, no, no, they're, um, with, uh, Karen and Susie. Um, do you mind if I come in and use your washroom? Uh, no, sure. Yeah, come on in. Thanks. One house with the full-size candy bars that makes everybody else's candy look small, huh? <laughs> you know, I, I bet Karen and Susie aren't that far along if you wanted to catch up with them. <gasps> Happy Halloween! <laughs> oh, my gosh, how cute. Look, a little gumball machine, a little hippie. Okay, here you go. Thank you. <laughs> I 
always wondered what it is about Dracula's kiss that makes everybody so crazy. Uh, historically, Dracula's kiss is equated with the kiss of death, so maybe you don't want to find out. I should go find out yet. That's a good idea. to keep you so late. Is everything okay? Oh, totally. Ellie just said that Miles was ravenous, so I brought over some extra mac and cheese. Oh, that's so nice and thoughtful of you. Mm -hmm. Miles, did you eat your lunch today, hon? Okay, well, Ellie, uh, it's getting late, and I'm sure you have homework to do. Thank you, and Lisa, thank you again for bringing food for the boys. I'll pick up a couple of extra boxes of mac and cheese for you when I'm at the store this week. No problem. Thanks, Mrs. Morgan. Yeah, yeah. next week. Mm -hmm. Bye. Um, can we talk? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. If this is about Allie, Scott oh, should have been here. Oh, it's not about Allie. Uh, it's about Dan. He lost his job, and I don't know what to do. Oh. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm sure he'll find something soon. Well, it's been over a month, and he hasn't. And my medical bills are starting to eat into our savings, and I was wondering if there's any way that Dan and I could borrow $5,000, and we'll pay you back as soon as we get back. Sorry about Dan's job and your medical bills, but I was taught never to mix money and friendships. I know you have it. I've seen how you spend money. Frankly, Lisa, how I spend my money is none of your business. And beyond that, how do I know that Dan really lost his job or what medical bills you're paying for exactly? Do you have any idea how hard it was for me to come here and ask you that? That almost perfect everything. I was going to talk to Scott about it on Halloween, but it was pretty clear his mind was elsewhere. And what's that supposed to mean? What it means is, I'm used to men and their wandering eyes, but I thought at least a woman would hear me out. Okay, I think we're done here. Agreed. Elliot, come on, we're going. for me to read to them tomorrow? Mrs. Morgan, I'm afraid there's been a few calls about you in our office. A concerned parent is saying that Miles is being neglected at home. What? Who called? That's ridiculous. As ridiculous as it may seem, you understand we have to take every call seriously. I understand that, but neglected? Who would actually call and say that? I'm not at liberty to say. But what I can tell you is that they say that he doesn't have warm enough clothes and that he always goes hungry. How would this person even know this? I feed my son. You've seen his life. Can't have you volunteer in the classroom. And how do we resolve this? Well, we have a meeting with Principal Franklin tomorrow at 9. And from there, we'll decide if social services needs to be called. Social services? You're going to drop this on me and then make me wait 24 hours? This is absolutely insane. Sorry. Karen, what's wrong? Someone made a call about Miles. They think we're actually neglecting our son. What? Who called? They won't tell me who. Someone called the school. Now they won't even let me volunteer. They're taking this seriously, Scott. They think we're actually neglecting our son. Hey, okay. We'll figure this out, okay? Miles file is flagged. Whatever happens now, everything that happens at that school, every every stomach ache, every skin meat, everything will be scrutinized differently. I can't believe someone thinks we actually don't feed our son. Hey, that's just ridiculous. Okay, they know you, Karen. They know our family. 
We're new to town, Scott. They don't really know us. We have to meet with the principal tomorrow, and from there, she'll decide whether or not to call social services. Okay, well, that's something. Okay, the, we'll, the, we'll show them a unified front and that we're not neglecting Miles. Okay, we can resolve this whole thing in one simple meeting. You got this, honey. Someone called Miles' school and said that we're neglecting him. You, that's crazy. I know, right? You, you know us pretty well. You don't think we could have... Karen, my goodness. You're the most thoughtful human being I've ever met. I can't imagine anyone saying that about you. Anyone? Not even Lisa? Not even Lisa. Susie, I, I know you don't want to talk badly about anyone. But the school might call social services because of this person now. I could take my son. I need to know what she said. I don't know that Lisa made that call, okay? I can't imagine her doing such a thing. But she did say that Miles was eating Elliot's lunch at school and that you've been working so much, she was worried about Miles. That's all I know. Thank you, Susie. I appreciate it, of course. Okay. Bye. To us at Dorothy Peacock. But you have to understand, we have to take any and all concerning accusations, like the call about Miles, seriously. It was Lisa Beasley, wasn't it? Can we at least be honest about that? Mrs. Morgan, we can't... Regardless it. of the call and who may or may not have made it, what do we do next? We love our son. That's the bottom line here. And I can see that in class. We love having Mrs. Morgan read to the kids, and they really love it, too. Well, at this point, I don't see enough evidence to warrant us calling social services. But that doesn't mean that the person who called us won't. She can do that? Anyone can do it if they deem it necessary and in the child's best interest. So you're saying that social services could show up at our house at any time? What if they don't like what they see? If they don't approve, then they could take miles away. Now, usually, in cases between disagreements with parents, I would encourage you to contact the person who you think is behind these calls. <laughs> and if these calls are just threats, Maybe you can figure out why she's doing this. That's what I've been trying to do. Yeah, I think we can take it from here. Thank you, Principal Franklin. And the reading? It's not a good idea right now. Maybe in the new year. I don't understand how one person can do so much damage. get to my 10 o'clock meeting. You'll be okay today? I think I'm gonna work from home. I wonder if she will. No, she won't, okay? Lisa Beasley's just looking for attention. <sighs> Scott, you have not seen her like I have. Okay, look, I have to get going, but I'll try to be home early. I know you made that call. I thought you didn't have any money, Lisa, but you went out and you got my car. Tell the truth. What is your problem with me? You're scary. Leave my family Karen. alone. Let's go. Let's talk. It's not a great look on you, hon. Just take a little time out, huh? I 
shouldn't have yelled like that, but she threatened my family. Yeah, <sighs> that was pretty bad, huh? Well, it wasn't great. <laughs> that bitch stole your look. I get mad too. I've just never had anything like this happen before. Alan Levine, attorney. Alan's my guy. I have his office from background checks on all my employees. Anyone babysitting your kids? You can't be too careful these days. <sighs> if I could just find out why Lisa is so set against me, I'm sure we could just talk it out. You could do that. Then call Alan. I want to go home. I want to stay. Please get in the car, okay? Hey, we'll get you something yummy when we get home, okay, buddy? Hop in there. We'll buckle up, okay? Okay. Hey, what's going on? I messed up today. Lisa got the same car as us, and I yelled at her in the parking lot. Oh, God. Well, that's the last thing we need. I know. I said I messed up, all right? She gets under your skin. You can't let that happen. She said you were off. Come on, Karen, have a little faith. Of course not. No, she was being flirty, and, and honestly, it was sad. <laughs> You're right. I'm sorry. I just feel like this woman has something new planned for us every day. It's exhausting. And that's why we have to be a good team and, and not turn on each other. And, you know, maybe don't yell at her in public. Now. You've got to be kidding me. Are you Mr. and Mrs. Morgan? Uh, yeah, how can we help you? We have a restraining order filed against Karen Morgan. If you step within 100 feet of Mrs. Lisa Beasley or her property, warrant for your arrest will be issued. <laughs> well, that means I can't go in my backyard. If Mrs. Beasley is within 100 feet, then no, you can't. Come on down and have some breakfast. I'll take him today. Lisa, I didn't hear you come in. You ready to go, Mo? Lisa, this isn't funny. I'm taking my son to school. Don't worry, team mom. I got it. Miles, come back here right now. Can you hear me? Miles? Yeah, I'm already taking him to school. He's fine. I thought you should sleep, but here, you're gonna need that. We have to see that attorney today. Thank you for seeing us. Mm -hmm. What can I do for you? I don't know what we need exactly. I'm having trouble with a neighbor. Oh. Huh. Yeah, so it seems this all stems from you well, attacking her in her car. Is this true? I yelled at her, yes, but I never put a hand on her. This woman has systematically been copying me, and frankly, it's making me crazy. I never would yell at someone like that. It's like she's trying to push me over the edge. Tane's in a trespass order for the entire Morgan family. You have one son. Yes, Miles. Uh, the Beasley daughter sometimes babysits him. Oh, no, I'd cut that out today. Yeah, no one in your family is supposed to set foot on the Beasley property. Karen, you specifically can't be within 100 feet of Mrs. Beasley no matter where you are. Well, what can we do? I mean, can we file our own restraining order? I mean, this woman has been harassing my wife. She threatened to call social services about our son. 
Is there a reason to call social services? Of course not. Okay, well, it appears that you have won the annoying neighbor lottery. Um, so yes, you could file a restraining order against her. It creates a paper trail of mutual disagreement, but look, I'm gonna be honest, it's not gonna change much. Even after everything she's done? The harassment? I mean, Lisa got the same car as us. She even has the same clothes, the same jewelry as me. Yeah, it's creepy for sure, but it's not order. And you just go about your life. Now, in the background, I'll look into this and I'll get a sense of what we're up against. Uh, you could start a log with any other off-color activities on her part. I can do that. Good. And if this woman wants to escalate things, we'll be ready. Hey, Mrs. Morgan, did you just don't want me to babysit today? Oh, that won't be necessary. Thanks. I think it's best if I stay home with Miles for now. So, next week? I'm sorry, hon. I think we're just gonna put babysitting on pause for a little while. Hey. Come on, Lou. Let's get you out of the closet. said we can't. But why? Because I said so. Hello? Daddy's home. I'm glad you came home so early. Well, I said that my wife was cooking up something special I needed to be home. Any chance you're cooking up something special? Uh, it's pasta sound. Special. <laughs> How you doing? You look, um, tired. I'm hanging in there. Miles, what are you doing? Come on over. What are you drinking? Nothing. You can't steal off. Oh, uh, well, I was thinking we could talk about our wives and, and this whole mess. Well, your wife came at mine with my kids in the car. Not much else to say. Look, I know my Lisa. Her problem is she just wants to be friends with everyone. But some women can't handle her. She can be intimidating looking like that. Uh, lo looking like what? <laughs> like, I'm proud to say that my wife is hot. And other women are jealous of her. So you think that Karen's jealous of Lisa, and that's why they're arguing? Oh, well, it wouldn't be the first time. Well, how many times has this happened to Lisa, exactly? You know, maybe I'll have a beer. Hey, bud, can I get a beer? How many times, Dan? It's been happening her whole life, practically, since she was a cheerleader in high school. Well, Karen was literally the homecoming queen. So if you think this is about a beauty contest, I think Karen can hold her own. So what are you saying? You're saying that Lisa brought this on herself? That Lisa made Karen yell at her in front of our kids? No, I'm saying that she's lying, and she's been lying since we moved in. Look, 
We're both married men. We know what our wives tell us and what's true. This isn't about looks. Karen and I have been together for 17 years. She's a level-headed and honest woman. Can you really say the same thing about Lisa? You stuck up for your wife. He also asked me how many times this has happened before. Dad, I hope you know that anything you say they're gonna try to use against me. I hope you didn't say anything stupid. Of course I didn't. But Dan. Well, honey, it got me thinking. This kind of thing does happen to you a lot. I mean, the people that lived in the house before Karen and Scott, and before that. So you believe her over me? What? Yeah. You believe some psychotic bitch over your own wife? <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. No. You want her more than me. No. Yes. You're going to leave me for her. I didn't say that. <laughs> Dan, don't leave me. <laughs> Oh, don't leave me. Dan, don't leave me, please. Look at me, look at me. I can't. Look at me. I love you. I believe you. Okay. I always believe you. Let's I'm just, sorry. Sweetheart, let's just get you to bed. Okay? I love you. sleeping with my husband last night. Right, she said that you would probably say that. Look, I don't want to get in the middle of this, but maybe it's time to let it go, Karen. I have never spray painted anything in my life. You have to believe me. Lisa probably did this to herself. I have a hard time believing that. Maybe you should apologize. I didn't do anything. And you'll do the whole back of the house, too? We do the whole perimeter, ma'am. Great. Would you like a cup of coffee? That'd be great, thanks. You got it. Going all right out there? Yep. Just feel better knowing what's going on around us. Yep. Here you go. Oh, thanks. Definitely helps. I just wanted to thank you for your referral. Excuse me? Your neighbor behind you? She said you're telling everyone how much you love the service and she wants the same package. Of course she did. Anyway, thanks. check for you. Nice job on that craftsman. Jarm always sells. <laughs> well, I hope you treat yourself to something nice with that check. 
You deserve it. Right now, the only thing I can think of is a cheeseburger. I forgot lunch. Ah. Maybe I'll pick up dinner for my boys. Glad you're here. We want to get this sorted out. May we come in? Uh, yeah, please. Ma'am, you are Mrs. Karen Morgan? Yes. And you were driving a silver Mercedes sedan this evening on Crockett Court? Yes. Have you been drinking? Have you been doing any illegal substances? What? No. I have a warrant for your arrest. I need you to turn around and put your hands behind your back. What? I didn't do anything. You have the right to remain silent. This is ridiculous. Anything you say can and will be used against you. Scott, she did this to me. She didn't do anything. You can't do this. You're arresting the wrong person. Hey! Karen, I'll call the lawyer. We'll get you out as soon as we can. I'll see you at the station. Honey, it's going to be okay. Karen. Drea, her car's in the driveway. She doesn't want to talk. I'm sorry. What are you sorry for? Sorry Susie won't talk to me, or sorry she won't testify that Lisa's a crazy bitch. Come on, Drea. We all know it. I could go to jail for years. I know Susie saw what happened. She can help me. I see you in there, Susie. The least you can do is talk to me. I'm sorry, Karen, I can't get involved. Ten years, Susie. That's how long Lisa's manipulation could send me to jail for. I would miss Miles' entire childhood. I just need you to tell the truth. I see what this has done to you. What she's done to you. I don't want to be next. Who says you're not next anyways? He went to bed. I'm just letting him watch some TV in our room while I change the sheets. Oh, he hasn't done that in over two years. Poor thing, he must be so confused. Let me help you. Hey, how about Susie's? Can she help us? I think I was wrong about her. What, she didn't see anything? About being my friend. I'll check on Miles. I'm 
things make a lot more sense now. Hey, Miles, will come on and come snuggle with you for a bit. You know, it's a lot that's been going on. Is there anything you want to ask me? Why is Mrs. Beasley mad at you? Because she thinks Mommy tried to hurt her. But you know, I would never do anything to hurt anyone, right? Is she going to be okay? Mrs. Beasley's body is going to be just fine. It's her mind that needs help. But that's nothing you need to worry about, okay? Let's try your bed. I'm sure Daddy fixed it up really nice. Good night, baby. It's a psychological condition called false victim syndrome. Listen to this. When presented with the facts, the false victim syndrome stalker will rationalize and manipulate everything he can and ignore even a direct question in order to preserve his fantasy of being a victim. He will initiate conflicts and proceed to twist them in his favor in an attempt to gain positive attention for himself. This is Lisa to a T. Wow, I mean, there's actually a name for this. And she's definitely done it before. Dan said so himself. Okay, well, if there's a history to this behavior, I'll look into it. With the Rafferty's, the people who lived in the house before us, she must have gotten to them, too. Okay, um, this false victim syndrome is very difficult to prove in court. But if we can establish a pattern of her history, then we can get out of this she said, she said stagnation. We can beat this, right? Oh, well, I never give guarantees. But this woman is clearly insane. Hmm? But I'll make sure the jury sees that. Is it me, or did he not seem that confident? Uh, I just... I'm gonna go to the office. I'm gonna see if I can find where the Rafferty's ended up. Maybe they'll testify. Hey, I can't find the Rafferty family anywhere. There's no listing for them after our address. Let me call their broker. She might know how to contact them. But if you're not finding their names listed anywhere, maybe they didn't want to be found. Sorry to understand why. I'm not sure how I'm going to get these ghosts to testify in court. Mm. There's one other thing. Um, I got another notice while I was out. Your reviews are in. Somebody doesn't like you. Oh my gosh, and it's more than one? One star, two stars. I only gave her two stars because she's pretty? What the hell? I mean, it's got your neighbor written all over each one of those. She uses the same words in multiple reviews. <sighs> I'm so sorry, Whitney. Lisa is trying to dismantle my life, step by step. Hey, don't apologize to me. I've seen you with clients. I know you're good at this. But given everything at home and the trial and now this, I think you need to take a back seat here until this all dies down. I wish it didn't have to be this way, but I understand. Right before we were going to have a really strong spring. Yeah, I know. Listen, go home, be with your family, show this woman who's boss. All right, Mr. Man, time for bed. I'll take him. You put your feet up. happy when I'm with you.
Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, welcome. You are here to determine whether my client, Karen Morgan, tried to kill the prosecution, Lisa Beasley. Karen says she did not. Lisa says she did. So we find ourselves in a she said, she said situation. Now, during this trial, I will not only present evidence that proves that, in fact, my client did not plan to or even accidentally hurt Mrs. Beasley, I will also show my client's credibility. Thank you. Well, you heard it. My colleague would have you believe that this is a simple case of she said, she said. I wish it were that easy. I really do. Unfortunately, what we have here today is the systematic brand, Lisa Beasley, who welcomed her new neighbors with open arms, introduced them around the neighborhood, whose own daughter has often babysat for the defendant, and who has done nothing but offer her friendship and trust, only to be violated and attacked by Karen Morgan. Thank you. In your statement, you swore that you never saw Mrs. Beasley get hit by your car, correct? That's correct. I had drinks in my car, so I was purposely driving really slowly, so there's no way I could have sped up or slammed on my brakes, like she said. No further questions at the moment. Mrs. Morgan, there's a pattern of aggressive behavior coming from you towards my client, Mrs. Beasley, is there not? A pattern? I don't think Isn't I... Isn't it true you attacked Mrs. Beasley's car in the parking lot of Dorothy Peacock Elementary with her two small children inside? Isn't that correct? I got mad at Lisa because she bought the same car as me, among other things. It happened once. Let's talk about some of those other things. Perhaps you're referring to the concerned call that someone made about your son to his kindergarten. Now, you assumed that Mrs. Beasley placed that call, even though that has never been substantiated. Isn't that correct? No, it's not. And the school dismissed that call. Okay. So someone, we don't know who, witnessed enough interactions between you and your son to warrant a concerned call on your behalf. And instead of asking your friendly neighbor for help, instead of looking at your own parenting, you, you jumped to the conclusion with no evidence that she's what? Out to get you? Interests at heart. I did talk to a neighbor, Susie Marino. Susie Marino, right. Who isn't here today to testify on your behalf. That's interesting. No further questions, Your Honor. Mrs. Beasley, could you please give us a history of your relationship with Mrs. Morgan? Well, the truth is, she's been harassing me for months. She dresses like me. Uh, she's isolated me from my friends in the neighborhood. Um, and she practically attacked me and my children at their school. And by attack, you mean she banged on your car window? And yelled? Yes, and yelled. That is correct, yes. Uh, to which Mrs. Morgan has uh, testified. Um, I just want to make sure that we have the facts straight. Maybe you can help me with uh, one more fact. Do you have Parkinson's like you mentioned to Mrs. Morgan? Well, the testing... And just a reminder, any statement you make about your medical history in court, we can subpoena your medical records. So let's try that again. Do you have Parkinson's disease? No. Do you have lupus? No. Gosh, considering this is a she said, she said type of case, that is a handful of lies right off the bat, Mrs. Beasley. Uh, no further questions. Lisa, do you consider yourself a nice neighbor? I do. Tell me why. Uh, I, I bought Karen a bottle of wine when they moved in. And how would you describe your friendship with Karen? I thought Karen and I were going to be lifelong friends, but she thought I called the school on her, and the relationship soured from there. I had to take out a restraining order against her after she got violent with me with my children in the car. I mean, it was just for our own protection. And that day, when she was driving, I mean, we... I hadn't been speaking a lot because of the restraining order, but I just never expected that she would. <sighs> Sorry. So I saw her at the intersection, 
and she was about a block and a half away, but she was driving slowly, so I thought we had time to cross the street. So Allie and I, we stepped into the intersection, and Karen sped up. And I was so concerned with protecting Allie that I didn't even know that I was hit until seconds afterwards. I just can't believe she's saying that I would do this to myself. I can't exercise. I can't go up the stairs in my own house. Why would I do that to myself? Why, indeed. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Allie, I know this has been difficult for you, but can you please tell us what happened on the 16th of May? I was crossing an intersection with my mom and suddenly Mrs. Morgan hit my mom with her car. She was screaming at Mrs. Morgan to stop hurting her. Thank you. No further questions. It must have been very scary seeing your mom like that. Did you go to the hospital with afterwards? No. Because you were looking after your little brother? Allie, did your mother go to the hospital? Allie, did your mother go to the hospital or see a doctor after she was supposedly hit by a car? No, she didn't. Who put that boot on her foot? My dad. It must be nice to have a doctor at home. He's not a doctor. Right. Maybe you can help me understand one more thing. Where were you and your mother coming from that day you were crossing the street? Home. Oh, so you were going somewhere? No. Just out for a walk? Allie, how long were you and your mother waiting on the corner before Mrs. Morgan's car came along? I guess about 20 minutes. 20 minutes, that's a really long time. What were you doing during that time? We're having a mother-daughter conversation. Excuse Allie. Me, please. Allie. Allie, what were you doing on that corner with your mom for 20 minutes? It's a long time to be standing outside doing nothing. Allie. We were waiting for Mrs. M we were waiting for... This is Morgan's car, so Mama could hurl herself into it. Thank you for your honesty. No further questions. We, the jury, find the accused Karen Morgan not guilty of the charges against her. You're free to go. Thank God. It's over. <laughs> Thank you. Good work. I am so glad that this is over and that we can finally put this behind us. Here's to new beginnings. I've missed these windows. It's over. We're free. She's never going to stop, is she?